Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. We build the 71 426 Hemi Cuda today. It's a 124 scale kit from Ravel, number 2943, released in 2017. It has a skill level rating of 4, mostly due to the large decals. Now the 71 Plymouth 426 Hemi V8 Cuda stands as an iconic muscle car. It symbolizes the peak of American muscle car engineering during that era. However, 1971 marked a transition away from muscle cars due to tightening emission regulations and targeted insurance rates. As a result, only just over a hundred Hemi Cudas were produced in 1971 making it a rare and sought-after collectible, and the original price of around $4,800 didn't help either. The kit has been reissued at least half a dozen times in various boxings, and it's a stock-only build. There's just one version in the box, and this one, as I said, was released in 2017. It contains 70 parts molded in white, chrome, and clear with vinyl tires and water slide decals. Now, the tires are... Um, non-branded, there's no sidewall script on them, and when it's done, the kit measures about 8 inches long, 3 and a half inches wide, and 2 and a quarter inches high. Here are the parts for the kit. You can see that the window is a one-piece unit, uh, making it easy to uh, glue in, and that shaker hood there, uh, it stands right out. Uh, the vinyl tires are solid, and they have no branding, but um, that means they'll take um, sidewall script from aftermarket decals very nicely. The parts are clean uh, and the chrome is in pretty good shape. So remember to use the uh, manufacturer safety and use guidelines when you use any of the products that you see or hear in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. They're in good register, but we won't be using uh, anything but the side stripes there, those uh, large black panels. Remember to use a lot of warm water when you place decals that large and it would may, uh, maybe benefit from some uh, setting solution too uh, for the panel lines and to uh, smooth out any wrinkles. We're also going to dress up our model with some of these uh, gauge images from Best Model Car Parts. Um, they're very nicely done and you just uh, you punch these out or cut them out and you just glue them in with some uh, clear glue or white glue. Also we'll be replacing the um, uh, de the kit's decals for the plates with some uh, period correct uh, images from the same company. We'll so gather up the parts for the uh, Hemi engine and as you can see it's Hemi orange color uh, basic block and it's got uh, black uh, valve covers and of course the usual steel parts uh, so go ahead and assemble that and by the way if you need um, further instruction. You can find those at the back of the review if you want clarification. Uh, but it goes together pretty easily. There's no real issues. And you can see the carbs are kind of a goldish uh, color. Here's a look at the completed engine. Um, you can see that uh, the alternators are aluminum. There's some uh, a white piece uh, there. That's your uh, oil filter. And uh, the, the belts are flat black. The um, a fan blade is semi-gloss black and it comes in the usual colors but it goes together pretty well and makes for a nice representation of the awesome Hemi engine. Now here's um, the, the best way to put uh, scripting on on your small tires. You don't have to mess with uh, cutting off the originals or trying to uh, paint the tiny little letters. You just put some aftermarket decals on there and uh, call it good. Um, and, you know, you don't have to spray them uh, flat black or gloss them. Um, this is a nice way to represent a set of tires. And here are the uh, wheel covers, uh, should say the mags, along with the um, in, inside uh, wheel portions. They just sandwich over the uh, uh, tires and you glue those to each other, the inner and outers. Uh, and uh, use a little black wash to bring out some of the highlights and they look real nice. The front suspension is just one piece, so uh, go ahead and clean that up and then uh, paint it uh, gloss black and you can add the uh, wheel assemblies to that. The rear suspension gets the same treatment uh, with the gloss black paint and uh, as you can see it's a one piece unit. You just Now remember, you have to scrape off the paint 
and, or, and chrome plating if you're going to glue those pieces together uh, where they're joined. Um, on the underside, um, you can see that the exhaust have been and the uh, gas tank has been picked out in uh, silver color. And uh, go ahead and mount that engine with some strong glue um, and be sure to get that uh, paint scraped off first. Uh, and you just uh, use some strong glue for that. Now when you're placing your rear suspension with the tires in there, make sure uh, that you insert the um, uh, uh, drive shaft into the back of the transmission as well. Now turning the unit over, you can see that it's coming together nicely and here's a rolling chassis. We'll work on prepping the body and there's some minor parting lines on the upper ridges of the quarter panels and drip molding, uh, but they're most prominent of course back on the rears and that pesky uh, C-pillar uh, parting line that uh, you'll have to work on. The windows are nice and clear and of course they're like I said one piece and uh, so you just use some glue uh, spots there um, forward or on the ribs that connect them front and back and uh, just drop that into place uh, and they fit pretty nicely. In order to uh, mount the rear spoiler, you, you'll see the arrows are pointed here at a couple of uh, spots. Uh, those are uh, need to be um, you know, reamed out with either a drill bit or the tip of a hobby knife uh, to mount the uh, spoiler back there. When the uh, glue is set on the spoiler, you can go ahead and add the backlight louvers into place. Uh, quite a nice touch for that era of uh, automotive uh, design. The radiator core support is painted body color and uh, the radiator itself and shroud are painted semi-gloss black. After it has dried, go ahead and scrape the uh, glue off the edges and uh, install that into place in the engine bay. And here you see a uh, uh, wood grain uh, around the IP there along with uh, the um, semi-gloss uh, da dash panel. And um, you can see uh, the best way to install your gauges uh, are just to punch them out with a hole, with a you know a hole punch uh, of the appropriate sizes, and uh, use a little dab of uh, just a dot of white glue to put those into position. Rotate them just as they would be in a car, and then you can add a little uh, a drop of uh, floor polish or clear uh, lacquer over them for a gauge uh, that looks really nice. Grab the parts for the um, seats, that's a two-piece um, seat, so uh, assemble those and then uh, clean up the seam. And uh, we're going to uh, paint those a, um, a satin white color. Add some chrome highlights to the spokes on the steering wheel and you can paint the uh, wheel itself either black or wood uh, green. Uh, there's very little detailing in the interior, there's a, a little silver spot on the shifter. But um, it's pretty light. Uh, there's a couple of um, things on the side walls that could uh, use some silver highlighting. But go ahead and install that uh, over a flat black floor, the seats that is, and your interior is finished when you get the uh, dashboard settled into place too. I'll locate your mounting points for the uh, interior and then go ahead and glue that into place with some good strong glue. Uh, and then you can add the body to the chassis. Uh, again, you'll have to um, locate your mounting points there and uh, use some super glue or epoxy and glue the body to the chassis. And we can work on the back end. Uh, the uh, license tags here are from the uh, model, best model car parts uh, set. Uh, and this is 1971 license tags to add some authenticity to your model. Move those big body decals out onto the body and um, you can use some setting solution to get those wrinkles out if you need it. Also, there's a little uh, silver detailing around the door handles. And at this time, we can add the tail lights and the rear bumper and valance into place. And the tail lights and the rear bumper should be there before the chassis and the body are actually joined. Uh, but the instructions show them going on afterwards. But um, just to take it from me, you should put them on ahead of time. Now, it could be done either way, but it's just easier... Uh, the tail lights are done if the you know tail lights are done first. Next, we'll gather up the parts for the front end, uh, and we're going to paint the um, grill piece there uh, body color. I like the contrast there, and I've seen some of the Cudas uh, instead of the uh, silver gray grill using uh, body color uh, tones to match, uh, and it provides a nice um, you know contrast there. You can paint the inserts uh, flat black at the base or the inset recess. And then uh, you can highlight the exterior trim with a uh, chrome pen as well as the uh, trim piece around the uh, top of the grill. 
use some crystal clear or white glue to uh, insert the headlights into the bezels and note they'll have uh, lines on them so you want to um, display those vertically or horizontally uh, nonetheless and uh, insert the chrome pieces for the turn signals and uh, don't forget the, the license tag um, and also then scrape the uh, chrome from the back of the bumper and the locating points and go ahead and, and glue the bumper into place too. And you can see here we've added uh, the brake booster in the engine bay and the battery. You can add a little chrome trim around the windshield um, and also the uh, slats, the vertical slats on the sides of the uh, front quarter fenders. And uh, you'll put the uh, grill and the bumper into place in the front end. And of course, uh, there was just one fit issue that I had with the kit that always, of course, you know, waits until the very end. Um, it didn't seem that there was enough clearance for the shaker hood to protrude through the hood with the carbs on uh, in place. Uh, just uh, the stack up just um, was causing me problems, so uh, I removed the carburetors. Now, fortunately, the shaker hood goes in place uh, on the motor, so you can't see them even if there isn't a problem. They just uh, disappear underneath the shaker hood. So uh, I had to take those out in order to get the hood to uh, close properly. Well, there you have it. Your model is finished, and it's looking just as good as the gorgeous 71 Cuda did in its prime. And uh, in the uh, right uh, Chrysler colors from the era, you, you can really make a head turner for your shelf. And uh, with the addition of uh, the license plates tags and the gauge uh, images, um, she really has a nice look to her uh, sitting on the shelf. And uh, with the contrasting white uh, uh, interior, uh, it's really quite an attractive car. Um, and the purple, you know, it appeals to not everyone, but to most people. Uh, both men and women alike. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can find us on our website, rideonreplicas.com, or Facebook too. Thanks!